What's up my plant lovers, Devin is here, AKA Plant Vibes, and today I wanted to go back to the basics. I wanted to show a video how to propagate one of my first houseplants that I ever grew, and what is often the very first or second or third houseplant that new plant lovers will start with, and that is the pothos. Pothos, a long time for a long time I thought the scientific name of pothos was pothos, because it sounds kind of scientific-y, right? Um, but it's actually epipremnum, and this is a plant that I love it because it'll grow in really nice sunny areas of the home. It'll also grow in areas that are not quite as sunny, but what it does is it'll, it'll create a nice, beautiful, overflowing kind of trailing habit. And it's a plant that is native to a lot of really warmer tropical areas, Central America, South America. And if you go travel to those areas, which I've been doing a lot lately, is you'll see that it's not only is it kind of like an overflower and as a, it grows as a really beautiful ground cover, but it also grows up. It's a climber. You'll see them climbing up beautiful trees and when they have a chance to climb, the leaves will actually get like enormous and can actually cause a lot of confusion with Monstera for um, new beginner growers. But one of the reasons why I love to propagate the pothos is because you can see I have this little area of my container that's not nearly as filled out and I'm kind of like a oh, I'm definitely a perfectionist like generally speaking and even with my plants I know growing plants has taught me to, to see imperfections as beautiful but regardless I like to get like a certain look and appeal with a lot of my plants and one of those appeals is I like to have really nice full looking plants so in this video, I wanted to show you guys two ways of how to propagate the pothos um, with success, my two favorite methods. And um, so without further ado, that sounds like, a, like an old like sitcom or old like news something. Without further ado, let's get right to it. All right, so here we can see some strands, some nice stems of our pothos growing overflowing. Now, as we are deciding where we want to cut, we always want to look for stems that are about six inches in length or so. That's kind of a, a, like a good rule of thumb. You always want to take a cutting that's about six inches. And how do we choose one stem over the next? All right, so this guy right here, this is a nice six, eight inch long stem. And what I'm going to be looking for are the number of leaf nodes in this stem. So here we, here we can see one leaf node, two leaf node, three, four, there's about five leaf nodes in this six inch long section. So what exactly is a leaf node? It's kind of says what it is in the name itself. A leaf node is basically where a leaf comes out of. Now the reason why they're so important is that leaf nodes are actually kind of like housing units for a hormone called auxins. Now as a stem is growing, um, the apical part the very like end is where like the growth will actually occur and that's why like plants get longer but if you cut that stem and you remove that like end point what you're actually going to be doing is sending signals to those auxins that are found within those leaf nodes that are not at the very end you're going to be sending them signals to start to grow Likewise, when we're propagating, those leaf nodes, those storehouses of auxins are where the new roots are going to come out of. So it's really important you want to include two or three of those leaf nodes in your cutting in order to get like two to three different sections where roots can actually form. Okay, so that's kind of a confusing way of saying like you want to get a, a nice six to eight inch long section with a few different of these like rib looking things uh, <laughs> in your cutting, okay? So I have these clean scissors and what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go and I'm gonna cut, if we can get in close here, I'm gonna cut in between. So this little section right here is called the internode. So I'm gonna cut right in that internode, uh, making sure that this node is on the cutting and this node, uh-huh. All right, sorry for that quick pause. I was just getting yelled at by Samantha, who is uh, my wonderful helper, videotaping, and she's getting mad that I'm about to cut her plant. Anyway, so I'm gonna cut right here in between those two leaf nodes. Now, 
So I took another cutting about 45 days ago right here. And like I was saying, those nodes are those storehouses of the energy of those hormones and auxins. And what is going to happen is that new growth is going to be emanating from that area where you took the cutting as well as in the cutting so you're getting like two for one it's like a two for one special by taking cuttings of, of your plants by propagating your plants you're creating new plants but you're also going to be creating new like branching structure from the pre-existing stem so that's really awesome and i and i love that you can see it's coming along slowly but surely and now another thing if you may have noticed in this cutting that i took just a minute ago what these little brown things are. Um, these are actually aerial roots. And why I'm pointing these out is just, you, you know, just leave them. Maybe they're a little unsightly. Maybe you don't like the way they look, but just leave them. They're gonna absorb a little kind of like humidity from the air. And that's gonna do a little bit to um, provide moisture for your, for your plant. But the reason why they actually exist on this plant is that they, like I was saying, they want to climb. They're used to climbing. That's like their natural way of growing. And so these aerial roots would actually kind of like harness into the trunk of a tree and help it to climb. So that's just kind of an interesting side bit. So I took the cutting and now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna show you the two different ways of going about it. All right, so I took this guy 45 days ago, like I was saying, and what I did was I wanted to make sure that I removed all of the leaves from anywhere that's gonna be in the water. So you don't wanna have leaves sitting in the water, not at all. You wanna remove any leaves that might be sitting in the water. Now, this is kind of a slow plant to propagate. You know, some other plants are much faster, would be like our wonderful Tradescantia zebrina. Um, but regardless, you know, plants are a game of patience and that's, there's nothing we can do about that. Now this plant has been in this water for 45 days. I change the water out about once a week. It's kind of cloudy now, meaning it's about time to change. However, I am gonna plant this up today. You can see the root is growing out of this leaf node here, and I have been allowing for about three of these leaf nodes to sit in that water, and that's exactly where the root is growing from, like I had mentioned earlier. Now, I could let this sit in the water and create even more roots and that would probably be, be a safer bet or i could plant it up right now and you know pothos is pretty resilient so i'm going to plant it up right now why would i want to wait to allow it to grow more roots well back to like plant botany 101 the way that you actually um, the way that the leaves will actually accept water into their into their cells is that water you know when you water your plant the water is absorbed in those roots and then it travels up the stems in what's called the xylem um, in through the stem and into the leaves and that's what hydrates them so if you don't have enough roots there's just literally not enough surface area of roots to absorb enough water quickly enough or efficiently enough then the leaves may dry out they may die and your cutting may not be as, as successful as you would ne necessarily want it to be but i think this is pretty good so once you have something that looks about like this, you can take your plant, and what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna plant this right back into it. Really create a whole new plant in a small container, maybe like a six inch container. Um, let me show you what size. So if you wanted to start a whole new pothos plant, get a small container like this size, and you could fill this with fresh soil and plant it right in here, but I would rather just fill this guy out. So that's what I'm gonna do. So I have like a little knife just like this and I'm gonna just kind of move it down here. Kind of create a nice little slot. Now as I'm planting it, I'm gonna ensure that all the area that was in that water is now going to be underneath the soil. And you just kind of nestle it in. Try not to damage that root or roots if you have more than one little baby like I do. Nestle it in and just kind of pack it in. And then you can give it some of that water that it had been sitting in. Now, as we know, cuttings, they, they like to stay moist. They need to stay moist. If you let them dry out, they're not going to be happy. And so the other cutting is actually just planting this cutting directly into the soil. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove the lower leaves 
remove these two lower leaves so that I have these three leaf nodes available to go right in the soil. I'm going to take my knife just like I did before and I am going to plant it in. So you might be asking why not just always go directly into the soil? And the reason is is that I find that I have more success when I start with a little bit of root material before I plant it in. When I have the cutting in this soil, I need to really ensure that it's staying moist all the time, that it is nice and warm, or else it's not going to have a successful time creating a new root. And you know, pothos, it doesn't always need to be super moist. Um, so maybe you're having to create different conditions from, for that one single cutting that you might necessarily have for the rest of your plant. And so if you wanna start in soil, you can do just like I've done and this is probably gonna be fine or try in its own pot of soil. Keeping that soil moist all the time is really the key to success. So once you get that cutting in there, you really want to give it some good water and make sure that it never dries out. After about a month or so, you just give it a little nudge to see if it's like rooted in yet. Um, and that's kind of the key to tell you that you've had pothos propagation success. So anyway, those are my two favorite ways of propagating pothos. I'm hoping that the rest of this fills out so I have a nice kind of like mounded overflowing look. I know Samantha is getting really tired behind the camera. She keeps telling me to hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. So we, I am going to end this video now. Um, I hope it was helpful. I hope that you try propagating pothos. And if you have any other ways that you like to propagate pothos, make sure you write it in the comments below. And if you have plants that you would like for me to talk about, to dedicate a video to, also leave some comments. Anyways, thanks for joining me today and um, stick around because I will be uploading more videos every single week. All right, I'll catch you later. Ciao.